The DOJ has offered non-prosecution for an acquired company if you followed these easy steps. It's released an update to its corporate enforcement policies, specifically targeting mergers and acquisitions. This should dramatically impact all M&A transactions and make compliance professionals a key stakeholder at the due diligence table before, during, and after the transaction. Welcome to Darshan Talks, I'm your host Darshan, and today we're discussing some important changes to the Department of Justice's corporate enforcement policies that could impact companies in FDA-regulated industries like pharmaceuticals and medical devices. For example, when the Antitrust Division of the Department of Justice recently announced deferred prosecution agreements with two pharmaceutical companies, Teva and Glenmark, they determined that a monetary penalty alone was not sufficient. Instead, the department required the companies to divest a widely used cholesterol medicine that was part of the company's price-fixing conspiracy. This was the first time the department used divestiture as part of a corporate criminal resolution. This demonstrates that the DOJ is taking compliance to be a major component of its program. Earlier this year, as part of this development of this overall compliance program and compensation, the DOJ started a new pilot program. Every criminal division resolution now requires companies to add compliance promoting criteria to their compensation systems. These criteria are tailored to the company's existing compensation system to ensure integration with its compliance program. The pilot program also rewards companies that claw back or withhold incentive compensation from executives responsible for misconduct or attempt to do so in good faith. For every dollar that a company claws back or withholds from an employee who engaged in misconduct or a supervisor that knew of or turned a blind eye to it, the department will deduct a dollar from the otherwise applicable penalty that the resolving company would pay. Accordingly, the DOJ is advocating that companies cannot wait to enact compliance promoting compensation policies until they are in the government's crosshairs. Companies, their boards, and their compliance officers should be proactively addressing how their compensation policies promote compliance today and should be assessing whether their compliance programs are fit for purpose and ready for deployment. In March 2023, the DOJ announced that every DOJ component engaged in criminal enforcement now has a voluntary self-disclosure policy. So when companies promptly disclose misconduct fully and in a timely manner, they can take advantage of the program's benefits in any type of case, in any department in the DOJ, in any part of the country. Encouraging companies to self-report misconduct can hopefully result in a virtuous cycle by giving a path to resolution and declination to companies trying to do the right thing. They're looking to identify and prosecute the individuals who are not. In the context of voluntary self-disclosure, Earlier this month, in October 2023, Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco announced a new voluntary self-disclosure policy that creates a safe harbor for companies that choose to promptly self-report wrongdoing directly to the DOJ. This is a significant shift from previous policies that offered a more limited credit for voluntary disclosures. So this is the new update that they are actually going to have the self-disclosure policy. The department-wide safe harbor policy for voluntary disclosures made in the context of mergers and acquisitions requires that going forward, acquiring companies that promptly and voluntarily disclose criminal misconduct within the safe harbor period and that cooperate with the ensuing investigation and engage in requisite, timely, and appropriate remediation, restitution, and disgorgement will receive the presumption of a declination. In the context of an M&A, the DOJ is looking for due diligence and timely post-acquisition integration alongside self-disclosure, remediation, disgorgement, and cooperation where warranted. Do you need help with your corporate compliance review? Contact us at darshan at kulkarnilawfirm.com. Let's be clear, as a baseline matter, to qualify for the safe harbor, companies must disclose misconduct discovered at the acquired entity within six months from the date of closing. This applies whether the misconduct was discovered pre or post acquisition. Companies will then have a baseline of one year from the date of closing to fully remediate the misconduct, depending on the specific facts, 
circumstances and complexity of the particular transactions, these deadlines can be extended by department prosecutors. So why should this happen? The entire DOJ shares the same principles in both civil and criminal enforcement. Holding corporate and individual wrongdoers accountable, incentivizing compliance, self-disclosure, remediation, and cooperation, and finally deterring and penalizing repeat bad actors. To that end, under this new policy, companies that voluntarily self-disclose misconduct fully cooperate with investigators, and promptly and appropriately remediate issues may be eligible for a presumption of declination, and that means that prosecutors would not pursue criminal charges absent certain aggravating circumstances. Misconduct disclosed under the safe harbor policy will not affect any recidivist analysis at the time of disclosure or in the future. Let's put that another way. Any misconduct disclosed under the safe harbor policy will not be factored into future recidivist analyses for the acquiring company. Again, this harbor, the safe harbor policy only applies to criminal misconduct discovered in a bona fide arm's length M&A transaction and does not apply to misconduct that would otherwise be required to be disclosed or already public or known to the department. Again, nothing in this policy impacts a civil merger enforcement. In the context of compliance teams, if your company does not perform effective due diligence or self-disclose misconduct of an acquired entity, it may be subject to full disclosure, full successor liability for that misconduct under the law. So the DOJ is reiterating that companies, those that invest in strong compliance programs, will not be penalized for lawfully acquiring companies when they do their due diligence and discover and self-disclose misconduct, and that compliance must have a prominent seat at the deal table if an acquiring company wishes to effectively de-risk a transaction. So what does all this mean for pharma and device companies? For FDA-regulated companies like drug and device manufacturers, this policy change could be a big deal, are already heavily scrutinized by regulators, and often are subject to DOJ investigations and enforcement actions. Under past policies, voluntary disclosures did not guarantee any specific outcome, so companies are more wary of the risks. With a clear safe harbor now in place, we may see more life science companies opting for voluntary self-disclosure when internal monitoring programs identify potential misconduct. The possibility of avoiding criminal misconduct could outweigh perceived risks. Of course, companies will need to carefully evaluate when self-disclosure is appropriate, and violations of FDA regulations do not automatically qualify under the self-disclosure if they do not rise to a criminal level. Minor regulatory violations are, of course, better handled directly with the FDA. Tune in next time as we continue to follow developments at the intersection of compliance and FDA regulations. Do you need help with your corporate compliance review? Call me at 302-252-6959.